نحمده و نسلی على رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و اخلل عقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافعا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورة النساء ورس 160 فبظلم من الذین حادو حرمنا علیہم طیبات احلت لہم وبصدہم عن زبیل اللہ قثیرا For wrongdoing on the part of Jews, we made unlawful for them certain good and pure foods which had been lawful to them, and for them, for their averting from the way of Allah many people. Verse 161 وَأَخْفِهِمُ الرِّبَا وَقَدْنُهُ عَنْهُ وَأَقْلِهُمْ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَأَعْتَدْنَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مِنْهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And for their taking, for their taking of usury while they had been forbidden from it and their consuming of people's wealth unjustly and we have prepared for the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. So in verse 161, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is labeling those people as disbelievers and is promising them azab and alima, a painful punishment, whom people who are involved in two activities and two things. These two being those which are forbidden for the followers of Prophet ﷺ and were also forbidden for the followers of the previous, previous prophets and for the people of Bani Israel also. These two being Number one, usury, and the second, unlawful earnings. Now, talking about usury, you need to all realize that in the times of the Prophet wasallam, the Arabs, they were very much in Arab, it was prevalent. And the economic system was totally dependent on it. And the whole economic system and the society pivoted around usury. So it was not just one fine morning that an order or a commandment of Allah came to forbid usury, but because it was so deeply rooted and it was so deeply ingrained in the society that the orders came and in the form of three stages. The first Allah talked about it was in Surah Rum, where Allah just conveyed a dislike for usury, saying that the money you think that it will multiply because of usury does not multiply in the sight of Allah. So it was just a, a light note of dislike in the sight of Allah for usury. And then the second verse was revealed in Surah Al Imran, the verse 130, where Allah said, Ya yuhalazina amanu la ta'kulu riba az'afam muza'afatan wa ta'kullaha la'allakum tuflihun. O those who believe, do not gorge yourself with usury, multiplying it many times, trying to double it or redouble it, but remain God fearing so that you might be successful. So here Allah said that all the believers and the God-fearing people to come up to the level of God-fearing people and to adopt the manners and the conduct of those who are successful, they should do what? The believers should refrain from indulging in usurious activities and dealings. The final verdict regarding the commandments and the order regarding usury was in Surah Al-Baqarah. Verse 275 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly announced and declared, 
that Allah has Allah has clearly declared that trade is permissible buying and selling and trade is permissible and Allah has strictly and completely forbidden all forms of riba and usury and then in verse 279 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announced ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullaha wa dharu ma baqiya min ar-riba in kuntum mu'minin that all believers remain god fearing and give up all outstanding gains from usury if you are a true believer wa in lam taf'alu fa'zanu bi harabin min allahi wa rasulihi and if you do not do so do what that you do not give up the outstanding gains from usury if you do not do so then you are at war with allah and his messenger so this is it this is how strictly and how completely to the minutest of details with perfection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden usury seven verses in surah al-baqarah and 40 traditions reported and agreed and narrated by all the scholars do we find the words where allah has strictly and completely forbidden usury and usurious dealings like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported to explain what actually usury is prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu qarzin jir'u nafin wa huwa riba that all forms of loans or all forms of business transactions of lending of loaning or of investing which at the time of investment and at the time of lending or loaning is decided that it will bring a sure shot pre decided profit then every form of this investment and loaning and lending is what it is riba it is usury that is what the investor at the time of investment or when a lender at the time of loaning and lending clearly decides that the person when he returns or she returns will definitely give a pre decided and a sure shot profit then this is riba and usury prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that three people whose supplication will not be heard or accepted even on laylatul qadr the blessed night on which it has been promised that all the supplications will be heard will be answered and will be accepted three people three people ill fated people their their supplications will not be heard the cr a person who is habitual to alcoholic drinks a person who does usurious dealings and third who is disobedient to parents allahumma la tajalna minhum then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has informed us that there are four people regarding whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that i myself will stop them entering into jannah and then there are four similar people for whom it has been reported that they will be deprived of the scent of jannah these four are number 1 a person who is habitual to alcoholism a person who does usurious dealings who is disobedient to parents and the fourth is the person who devours the inheritance and the wealth of an orphan has it Abu Huraira has it uh, has it Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ijtanibu sab'al mubiqat refrain create a manner of abstinence keep strictly away from seven destructive moral sins so seven destructive sins are i have narrated all of them previously but one of them is what lending money on usurious terms and then hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad and ibn majah that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has reported that on the night of a session i saw people i passed by a group of people whose bellies were like houses full of snakes 
and snakes could be seen from outside and people were crossing and they were trampling their bellies and I asked whom they were and I was told that they were those who used to do what? They used to indulge in usurious dealings. Astaghfirullah Rabbi bin kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Ibn Majah, the passenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are 70 parts of usury. That is the sin, the major sin of usury has seven, seven branches, 70 parts. And one of the most ordinary part is like committing incest on one's own mother. Astaghfirullah Rabbi, Astaghfirullah Rabbi. Hajjah Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said, cursed is one. You know when there are words of being cursed that that sin becomes what? It becomes a major sin. Cursed, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa cursed him who lends money on interest and him who receives it and him who writes the deed and those who witness to the transaction and said that they are all equal partners to the sin. So you know what Allah and what Prophet ﷺ wanted was that the whole system of usurious dealings may collapse and it may be eradicated and it may be uprooted. So all the individuals who are dealing in one or other way, in any way or the other, they are all cursed. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu said after reciting these verses, he said, give up usury altogether and guard yourselves even against a trace or suspicion of it. Even if you have a trace of it or even if you have a suspicion that it may be a usurious dealing, Prophet sallallahu has strictly instructed to stay away from it. Hazrat Ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala and who has reported in Mustad Ahmad and Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu said, however plentiful the interest may be, its end is want and scarcity. That we think that it might increase as Allah says in Surah Baqarah verse 276, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ riba Allah blots out the usury. The money doesn't multiply. You might be thinking in currency, in your in your trade, it might be increasing apparently, but in the sights of a light is not increasing. It is just increasing the intensity of the hellfire. It is a portion too. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Musnad Ahmad and Abu Dawood that a time will come when everyone will be a usurer. If a person will be taking or receiving it himself, even if a person will not be taking or receiving it himself, its dirt will surely be reaching inside his body. And this is the period of today. Even despite not wanting to indulge in it because of certain situation, people do land up indulging in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand and help us realize and help us perceive how strictly and how completely to the minutest of details in perfection has Allah forbidden it all for all of us. And now after usury, the next thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding and promising a painful punishment in verse 161 is unlawful earnings as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah mu'minun verse 51 says ya ayyuhar rusulu qulu min tayyibati wa'milu salihan Allah is addressing the messengers and says O oh messengers eat of what is good and pure and lawful and do not and do the righteous deeds. And similarly in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Ya yuhallazina amanu kulu min toyyibati ma razaknakum. That you eat or you consume what? Which is toyyibat. So what do we mean by toyyibat is basically in three forms. Number one, toyyibat refers to all forms of food which is clean and pure. 
It is not infected. It is not contaminated. It is not rotting or putrefying because obviously this will cause somebody to fall sick and hence will be wasting a lot of time and money and energies and so on. The second thing which we mean by Thoi Bath is everything which is in the it, it is in the permissible or halal list of foods and drinks which we are used to, allowed to or permitted to consume by the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. So, Tawayyibad means all things other than the things which are forbidden to eat or drink. And the third thing is uh, what Tawayyibad means is that things which have been bought or which have been arranged by lawful earnings. How important lawful earning is. Even here Allah is saying, Amwali nasibil batil, in a way which is not just, which is not fair, which is not permitted by Allah and which is forbidden by Allah. How important a lawful earning is, I will be now narrating a few traditions to make us realize and comprehend the importance of lawful earnings because today this is like really getting out and people are like just not realizing the important, how important it is to have uh, lawful earnings in their, um, in their lives. Like Hazrat Saad bin Abi Bakas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he inquired and he asked the Prophet sallallahu to tell me uh, some something which I may do that my prayers may be heard and they may be accepted. And you know what advice Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said he did? He said that make your earnings lawful. Make your earnings lawful. So remember that if a person has unlawful earnings or is earning by some forbidden means then his prayers or supplications might not be heard or might not be answered and similarly prophet sallallahu has explained the situation of a person has abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in muslim that prophet sallallahu said said that he narrated the story of a man who was oppressed and who was um, undertook a very long journey. So we, when he arrived, he was in a condition that his hair and his clothes were all messed up and filthy and dirty and his body was also covered with dust. And he raised his hands and he was uh, he was asking and he was crying. He was saying, oh, Lord, oh, my preserver, that he was begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Prophet said, but his food was of impure, that is, was out of what? Unlawful earnings. And his dress was impure and he had been brought up what was unlawful earnings. So how can his prayer then be granted? So the second thing which we realize, <coughs> the second point which we get from here is that supplications and prayers will not be heard and will not be answered if the person is resorting to unlawful means. Then another thing, Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Musad Ahmad that if a person buys a cloth for 10 dirhams and among these 10 dirham there was one which was because of dishonest or unlawful earning then none of his salah will be accepted by Allah as long as he is wearing that dress. So this is how important it is. Similarly, in other words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that if a person just takes one morsel, just takes one morsel of any food which was which was prepared by unlawful earnings, then his prayer for 40 days will not be accepted. So register supplications and du'as and prayers will not be accepted and answered. And second is what? Prayers will not be accepted and answered. And the third thing is, Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who relates, uh, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Muslim that Prophet said, O oh people, 
Allah is pure and he accepts only what is pure and he has given the same command concerning to all the believers as he has to the prophets. And what is that? Ya ayyuhar rasulu qulu min tayyibati wa'amilu sualihan. So if a person is giving charity, if a person is giving charity out of unlawful or forbidden source of incomes, then the charity will not be accepted by the pure almighty Allah. In contrast to that, Prophet Wasallam has been heard informing all of us that when some any one of you makes charity in the path of Allah by earnings of lawful means, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes player in it and he takes it in his right hand. It protects it, he cherishes it and then it grows till it becomes as large, huge or voluminous as the Mount of Uhud. So this is only charity in the path of Allah. It only will be accepted if the earnings from which the charity is made were lawful. So if you sum up Dua, Salah and Charity all not accepted. If Dua is not accepted, then the prayers of seeking forgiveness will not be accepted. So where will this person having unlawful earnings end up with? Obviously, when neither neither the Dua, the Salah or Charity, nothing is accepted, then the person will end up landing in the hell. And that is what is exactly been reported by Hazrat Jabir anhu in Musnad Ahmad. Prophet said, The flesh and the body shall not go to heaven which was raised on unlawful sustenance. And hell is more deserving of the flesh that has grown on one's body out of what is unlawful. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar Allahumma kfini an halalika an haramik wa agnini bi fadlika amman sivak Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari the Prophet sallallahu said that a time will come when people will not care whether they are acquiring in lawful or unlawful in legitimate or illegitimate manner and this will be one of the signs of resurrection and then how important it is to have lawful earnings. As Abdullah bin Abbas ta'ala, who reports that Prophet Sallallahu said to earn lawfully is also a duty next to the principal duties of faith. And what is the promise? Hazrat Abu Tayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Tirmizi that Prophet Sallallahu said that a trader who plies his trade cleanly and honestly will rise on the day of resurrection in the company of prophets, truthful and the martyrs. And then he recited the verse of Surah An-Nisa 69, so this will be the company of the person who will be making a struggle and effort to make what? Lawful earnings. And then in Bukhari, the words of Prophet Sallallahu have been narrated that the cleanest food, the cleanest food and the purest and the most lawful food is that which has been earned by the labor of one's own hand. And Prophet then said, Hazrat Dawood used to work with his hands for his living. So it is the manner of the prophets and the messengers of Allah. Hazrat Rafi bin Khudaj radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Mustad Ahmad that Prophet was inquired that which income was the best and most pious. He said, the one who works with his hands in every trade every trade that was done with honesty. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that whatever a believing bondsman gives 
grew out of a crop or a planted tree and a bird and an animal or a man ate from it, it would be a charity on his part. So the uh, lawful earnings we do, whatever we raise out of it, it becomes a charity also. And then when we are talking about usury and we are talking about unlawful earnings, we very clearly need to be uh, very clearly need to comprehend that these are strictly forbidden. But even if there is a doubt and there is a confusion and we are not crystal clear, then for the situation, Prophet ﷺ has still guided us. Hazrat Norman bin Bashir who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet ﷺ said, Al halalu bayyan wal haramu bayyan wa baynahuma mutashabihat. What is allowed and permissible is clear and what is forbidden is also clear. But between them, there are a few things which are doubtful and many people do not know about them. So a person who saves himself from what? From the forbidden will save his faith, save his belief and save his religion. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Verse 163 Indeed we have revealed to you as we revealed to Hazrat Nu alayhi salam and the prophets after him and we have revealed to Ibrahim, to Ismail, Ishaq, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam well, and their, their descendants and Hazrat Isa and Hazrat Ayyub and Hazrat Yunus and Hazrat Harun and Hazrat Suleiman and to him what Allah did, we gave him Wa Dauda Zabura, we blessed him with the book of Zabur. Verse one sixty four and we sent messengers about whom we have related their stories to you before, and messengers about whom we have not related to you, and Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam with direct speech. Verse one sixty five and we sent messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Verse 166 but Allah bears witness to that which he has revealed to you. He has sent it down with his knowledge and angels bear witness as well. And sufficient is Allah as a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say that you have sent down this book of Allah, this Quran with your, with your knowledge. Bless us with the knowledge of Quran. Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi zidni ilma, Allahumma fakihna fi deen, Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamtani wa allimni ma yanfa'ni wa zidni ilma, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min ilmin la yanfa'u, min nafsin la tashpa'u, min da'watin la yustajabu lahu. Verse 167, Indeed, those who disbelieve and avert people from the way of Allah have, second, have certainly gone far astray. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma ikhdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Allahumma ikhdina sirat al-mustaqeem. Verse 168, Indeed, those who disbelieve and commit wrong or injustice, never will Allah forgive them, nor will He guide them to the path. Allahumma ihtina sirat al-mustaqeem, Allahumma alhimna rushdan wa aizna min shuroori anfusina. Verse 169, Accept the path of hell. Allahumma achirna min an-nar. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. They will abide therein forever, and that for Allah is always easy. Verse 
verse 170 oh mankind the messenger has come to you with the truth from your lord so believe it so believe in it it is better for you but if you disbelieve then indeed to allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and earth and ever is allah knowing and wise allahumma hasibna hisab yasira verse 171 ya ahl al kitab la taghlu fi dinikum wa la taqulu ala allah illa al haqq o people of the scripture do not commit excess in your religion do not do what do not commit excess in your religion or say about allah except the truth Hazrat Isa alayhi salam the son of Hazrat Maryam alayha salam was but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Hazrat Maryam and a soul created at a command for him so believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three desist desist it is better for you indeed allah is but one god exalted is he above having a son to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth and sufficient is allah as disposer of affairs So here in verse 171 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly addressing the people of the previous scriptures and is commanding them directly to do a regarding a don't and the don't is la taghlu fi dinikum that do not commit excess in your religion Now what do we mean by ghuluf or what do we mean by committing excess in religion which the people of the scriptures of previous books were committing in their religion by ghuluf we mean committing excess overdoing or to cross the limits now what excess did the people of the books do what they were actually indulging in was that in the love in the respect and the regard of their prophets they were exceeding and exceeding to the extent of overdoing and to the extent of crossing the actual limits and the boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the overdoing was that they in the love respect and regard of their prophets they actually raised them to the ranks of Allah they raised their ranks of their prophets to the rank of the sovereign allah and that is why because of their over indulgence and because of their ghuluf and crossing the limits they they were indulging in committing polytheism in the being of allah as it has been mentioned in quran that allah says qalat al yahud wa zahir ibn allah wa qalat al nasara Isa ibn Allah the Jews they say that Uzair alayhi salam is the son of Allah nauzubillah and the Christians they claim and they say and they believe that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was the son of Allah nauzubillah min zalik so in this Allah has forbidden for the followers of the prophets sallallahu alayhi wasallam to commit or indulge in excess or overdoing or crossing the limits And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also instructed us to refrain from all form of ghuluf which is forbidden. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do not overdo, do not overdo or cross the limits while praising me, but just say what? But just say that I am a slave of Allah and his messenger." And Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself used to supplicate, "O oh Allah, Do not let my followers make my grave as an object of worship. And this in this verse Allah has then continued 
and this uh, has continued talking about the polytheism the Jews and the Christians used to conduct and uh, has strongly negated the concept of trinity in Christianity the concept of trinity is the concept of three gods and according to Christians they 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 say that there are three gods and these are the three paths of god nauzubillah summa nauzubillah min zalik they say that these three paths of god they get together to make one god and the different sects have different concepts about the three gods like one sect says that the three gods are allah has a jibril and has a isa alayhi salam and the second sect says that the three gods are allah has a maryam who they consider as the wife of nauzubillah wife of allah and hazrat isa alayhi salam the son of allah so they say that there are three gods but yet there is one god because they this is nauzubillah the three paths which make up one god so according to these verses allah subhanahu wa taala has condemned and forbidden this revealed polytheism of christians and has explained the actually correct concept of monotheism verse number 172 never would isa alay salam disdain to be a servant of allah nor would the angels near to him and whoever disdains his worship and is arrogant he will gather them to himself all together verse 173 and for those who believed and did righteous deeds he will give them in full their rewards and grant them extra for his bounty but as for those who disdained and were arrogant he will punish them with a painful punishment and they will not find for themselves besides allah any protector or helper was 174 oh mankind there has come to you a conclusive proof from your lord and we have sent down to you a clear light allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi basri nura wa an yamini nura wa an yasari nura wa fawqi nura wa tahti nura wa imami nura wa khalfi nura wa ja'al li nura verse 175 so those who believe in allah and hold fast to him he will admit them to mercy from himself and bounty and guide them to himself on a straight path allahumma ja'al fihim allah make us one of these verse 176 they request for you they request from you a legal ruling say allah gives you a ruling concerning one having neither descendants nor ascendants as heirs if a man dies leaving no children but only sister she will have half of what he left and if and he inherits from her if she dies has no children but if there are two sisters or more they will have two third of what he left but if there are both brothers and sisters the male will have the share of two females allah makes clear to you his law lest you go astray and allah is knowing of all things now in this last verse of surah an-nisa verse 160 176 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained here some rules of uh, the islamic law of inheritance all the laws of inheritance and all the orders regarding the law of inheritance in islam have been explained and we have discussed them in detail uh, in the beginning of uh, in the beginning sessions of surah an-nisa but here allah is giving a last and a final addition of order regarding the heir of a person who has neither descendants or ascendants the person of the disease is known as kalala in i again repeat is a deceased who neither had children nor parents now in the previous verses 
also where we discussed a uh, similar disease having neither children nor parents the share of the children the share of the parents was allocated for the maternal step siblings the share which was allocated for the parents was given to whom to the children or the siblings by the the step siblings from the mother now in this verse the right which was supposed to be given to the children is now being allocated for the real siblings and they are exactly in the same manner and the same format that if the deceased just has one real sister then she will receive like a single daughter the half of the inheritance but if the deceased has two sisters or more than two sisters then similar to a person having two daughters or more the sister will a sisters will receive to third of the inheritance of the deceased and if the deceased who does not have any children or parents if the person leaves behind combined brothers as well as sisters then the share of the brothers will be twice as compared to the share of the sisters similarly as what was the share of the sons was double as compared to the son uh, to the share of the daughters Allah says wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim is all knowing Allah is all knowing of the revelations of the orders of the commandments he has sent to all of us Allah help us obey all these help us accept and believe all this what we have learned Alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah our sessions of surah an-nisa by the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been completed may allah accept all our deeds all what was read what was taught what was what you all listened what was heard what was narrated was what whatever was written down and put down whatever was dictated allah help us remember help us comprehend and believe the message of all the verses of surah an-nisa help us adopt the teachings of quran and hadith and bless us with steadfastness in our deeds and bless us with sincerity in our intentions rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim Now I will without any delay because I know that we are already running short of time I have received many requests of your duas I have screened them and gone through them I will not be taking names but they will all be in my memory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everybody's requirements and desires and duas and prayers and supplications and miseries and issues and problems he is all seeing he il- he is all hearing he is all knowing so with all this inshallah let's all raise our hands let's all raise our hands and let's all praise our lord Let's all beg and pray and seek his forgiveness and his bounties with the belief and with the conviction that our prayers will be raised to his throne inshallah taala with the belief and the conviction that it will be heard it will be accepted and it will all be answered inshallah taala by his mercy and by his kindness Now I will be requesting you to praise Allah and to recite the durood with me. 
سبحان اللہ والحمد للہ ولا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ والحمد للہ ولا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ والحمد للہ ولا الہ الا اللہ واللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ و بحمده سبحان اللہ العظیم سبحان اللہ و بحمده سبحان اللہ العظیم سبحان اللہ و بحمده سبحان اللہ العظیم اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی آل محمد کما صلیت علی ابراہیم و علی آل ابراہیم انکا حمید مجید اللہم بارک علی محمد و علی آل محمد کما بارکت علی ابراہیم و علی آل ابراہیم انکا حمید مجید یا حیو یا قیوم بی رحمتک نستغیس یا حیو یا قیوم بی رحمتک نستغیس ربنا آتنا فی الدنیا حسنتا و فی الاخرت حسنا وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا عذاب المیزان وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنقونن من القاسرین ربنا اننا آمنا ربنا اننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتذفنا مع الأبرار وتذفنا مع الأبرار اللہم انکا عفو قریم تحب الاف فحفو عنا فحفو عنا فحفو عنا یا رحم الراحمین یا رحمان یا رحیم یا حنان یا منان او اللہ او اللہ او دمرسفل O Allah, O the merciful, wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. It was with your help, it was with your support, your guidance that we stayed connected. We stayed connected with these sessions. O Allah, except from all of us, except, except from all of us, what we heard, what we learned. Help us remember all we learned. Help us remember all we learned with your blessings. Help us comprehend and retain it. Help us believe in it. Help us act according to all the teachings we learned. And keep us steadfast. Keep us all steadfast in our dealings, in our deeds. Allah, help us all stay steadfast. In our connection with Quran, in our connection with Quran till, till the last breath of this life. Help us reform ourselves, help us correct ourselves so that you may be pleased with us, so that you may be pleased with us. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, in this month, in this blessed month of Ramadan, Accept, accept all our worships, all our fasts, all the recitations of Quran. May be, may we be out, out of those lucky ones who, who will be called from the gate of Rayan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless us with your mercy and bless us with your count, kindness. Accept our Salah, accept our Salah. Our prayers are no doubt very faulty, are no doubt very incomplete. They are all very broken and very faulty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah bless us, accept them and bless us with the love of Salah. 
makes the lies the coolness of our eyes, of our souls, make us one of those who start enjoying prayers. May we develop, may we develop the feeling of meeting our Lord in our Salah. Bless us and our offsprings, all of our offsprings, the consistency in Salah. Make us one of those who just don't offer Salah but establish Salah. Help us establish our Salah with perseverance and steadfastness. Rabbi ja'alni maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbi ja'alni maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbana taqabbal dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by your mercy, by your blessings, by your kindness, Allah, Allah accept all that was spent by all of us in this month of Ramadan. Accept all the zakat, accept all the supererogatory charities in the path of Allah that all of us spent in this blessed month. Accept all of it from all of us and bless of bless all of us with multiple multiplied rewards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all in the excellence of your remembrance bless us all with the excellence of your remembrance Rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik Bless us with tongues which are supple with your zikr and which are supple with praising you. Bless us with souls which are full of your gratitude. Bless us with body which is patient while obeying you. Bless us with the excellence of gratitude, of reliance, of faith. Of belief help us perfect our faith and belief help us all be patient in your obedience Allahumma ja'alli saboora wa ja'alli shakura wa ja'alli fi aini saghira wa fi a'yunin nasi kabira Rabbana sabbit aqdamana يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلبي على طاعتك او الله ذا ماجنيفيشنت او الله ذا اول نوين اول سين اول هيرين او الله اول كايند اند اول مرسيفول هيلب اس اول هيلب اس اول كنترول اور تيمبر Help us all control our tongue. Help us and guide us, improve our mannerism, our conducts, our dealings. Help us all refrain from foul and abusive language, forbidden conversations. Help us all purify our hearts. Guide us all to purify our thoughts, our souls, and our desires. Allahumma alhimna rushdan. Allahumma alhimna rushdan wa aizna min shuroori anfusina. Allahumma tawahir qalbi min al-nifaki wa amali min al-riyai wa lissani min al-qazabi wa aini min al-khayanati inna ka ta'lamu man khayanati al-aini wa ma tukhfi al-sudur. Allahumma rahmatika arju. Allahumma rahmatika arju. Fala takilni ila nafsi min tarfata aynin. Wa aslihli sha'ni kullahu la ilaha illa anta. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwa ha. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwa ha. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwa ha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of the God-fearing. 
Bless us all with the fear of Allah. Bless us all with the fear of standing in the coat of Allah. Bear us all. Bless us all with the fear of accountability. Allah, make us all among those who are wise. Make us among those all who are wise and who make preparations for the hereafter. Make us among those who fear the life hereafter. Make us one of those who remember the death and who remember the life of hereafter. Allah help us and guide us, remove help us and guide us to remove from our from our hearts the lust and love of this temporary life, of this temporary world. Help us and guide us to strive and struggle for hereafter. Help us and guide us to change our priorities, our preferences. Help us reform and correct ourselves that we may gain your pleasure. That we may gain be we may gain your pleasure. Oh Allah. Oh Allah, you are the merciful. You are the exalted. You are the master of masters. We can just beg from you. We just pray from you. Oh Allah, help our help us all. Help us all, support us all, guide us all. We beg you, we beg you to be kind to our parents. Rabbirhamhuma kama rabbayani sagira. Rabbirhamhuma kama rabbayani sagira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we beg you for the choicest of your blessings for our parents, our benefactors. Have mercy on our parents. Have mercy on our parents the way they had mercy and they were kind to us when we were young. O merciful, O merciful Allah, help them, support them, protect them. From all forms of worries, all stresses, all illnesses and ailments and weaknesses. Bless them with the best of your blessings here and hereafter. Save them. Save them from any form of dependence. Save yours. Allah, we have reliance in you. We have we want to be dependent on you only. Keep us and keep our parents dependent of nobody other than you. No one other than you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Master of Masters, O Rahman, O Rahim, all those whose parents, inclusive of me, all those whose, whose parents, our near and dear ones have passed away. Be kind on them. Be merciful to them. Forgive them all. Forgive their sins. Forgive their sins. Reward them with the best of reward for all their major or minor deeds. Allah, we beg you, be kind to them. We pray, be merciful to them. Bless them with the best of your hospitalities, of your gracious hospitalities. Join them with the righteous. Join them with the prophets. Allahumma fir lahum. Allahumma fir lahum. Warham hum wa afihim. Warham hum wa afihim. Wa akrim nuzulahum. Wa wasir mudhilahum. Wa abdilhum darun khairan bin darihim. وَزَوْجٌ خَيْرًا مِنْ زَوْجِهِمْ وَأَهْلًا خَيْرًا مِنْ أَخْلِهِمْ اللَّهُمَّ نَكِّهِمْ مِنَ الْخَطَايَا كَمَا يُنَكَّ الثَّوْبُ مِنَ الدَّنَسِ وَاقْسِلْهُمْ بِالْمَاءِ وَالسَّلْجِ وَالْبَرَدِ 
اللهم حاسبهم حسابا يسيرا اللهم ادخلهم جنة مع الأبرار الله سبحانه وتعالى make their graves as روزات الجنة make their graves as the gardens of Jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the temporary separation this temporary separation from all our deceased it hurts us Allah it is painful for us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all on the day of resurrection reward us all and gather us all in the gardens in the palaces of Jannah. Rabbi ibn li indaka baitan fil Jannah. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata ayunin wa ja'alna lil muttakina imama. Wa ja'alna lil muttakina imama. Muttakina imama. O oh, gracious, O oh, almighty Allah, bless our families. Bless our family members with all your choicest bounties. Make our husbands are the coolness of our souls and of our, our hearts. And make us, make us, us wives, source of happiness and contentment for our husbands. Bless our husbands the best of health, the best of faith. And the best of all what is hereafter and here in this world. Help us all. Guide us all to develop all the all the attributes of the best wives, of the best Muslim wives. Make us all hafizat, qanitat, swalihat. Rabbana, hablana, milatun karahma. Innaka antal wahab. Rabbi habli min ladunka zurriyatan tuayyibatan. Rabbi habli min ladunka zurriyatan tuayyibatan. Innaka sami'ud dua. O listener, O listener of all the prayers, O mighty Allah, O kind Allah, O merciful Allah, you who listens, who answers, who blesses us with all our prayers, accept all our prayers for our children, accept all our prayers which are good for them, which are sound for them, which we, we pray for our children. Those, those of my sisters, of my daughters, who are asking for sons, who are praying for sons, Bless them with sons. Those who are longing for daughters, bless them with pious daughters. And those of my sisters who are, who are desirous of grandchildren, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless them with healthy, normal, and pious, believing children. Believing grandparents, grandchildren, and all of us. Oh Allah, oh Allah, our sustainer, our creator, you with all your bounties and blessings, you who have blessed us with children, with sons, with daughters, Allah, make our children pious, make our children God fearing. Allah bless them with taqwa and piety. Allah bless them with taqwa and piety. Bless them with a perfect belief. Bless, bless them with bless them with the best of belief and iman. Bless them with the knowledge of Quran and Hadith. Oh Allah, bless our children with the knowledge of Quran and Hadith. Allah, we repent, we regret that some of ourselves, we wronged ourselves. A part of our lives was deprived of Quran. We stayed away from Quran. But Allah, we beg you, 
We beg you to not deprive our children from the knowledge of Quran. To not deprive our youth from the knowledge of Quran and Hadith. Make them the scholars of Quran, the teachers of Quran, the preachers of Quran. Make them the believers of Quran. Make them the followers of Quran. Allah, be kind to all of us. Allah, extend your mercy on all of us and choose from our children. I choose and pick out from all, from all of our children to be those who those to be those who are who are those who proclaim for the Salah, those who call for Salah, those who memorize the Quran, who memorize the Hadith, those who are the reciters of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave none of our offsprings, leave none of our offsprings deprived of Quran, of the knowledge of Hadith and Salah. Make our sons, make our grandsons of those who establish the congregational salah. Allah help protect the belief, the faith, the honor, the haya of our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our siblings, the relations of kin, bless them all. Bless them all the bless, the best here and hereafter. Save them from all the worries of all the illnesses of all the miseries of her and hereafter. O provider of all provision, O Razik, O Razak, O Razik, O Razak, O Rabbul Alameen, provide us all with halal provision. Help us, guide us towards the lawful earnings. Allahumma kfini an halalika an haramik. Allahumma kfini an halalika an haramik wa aghnini bi fadlika amman sivaq. Wa aghnini bi fadlika amman sivaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us and guide us to save ourselves, to save ourselves from unlawful earnings. Help, help our male members to earn easily, comfortably, honorably, ample, ample of lawful earnings. Help us, help us be content, be grateful for whatever, whatever sustenance you bless us with. Help us, simplicity, save us from wasteful means of spending. O oh Allah, there is no doubt that you are the Shafi. O oh Allah, O oh the Shafi Allah, help our sick, help our ailing patients. All my sisters and daughters and my companions, who have requested to pray for their sick and for their ailing. Oh, my merciful Allah, oh, my Shafi Allah Almighty, accept our prayers for our sick. All those who are suffering from malignancies, from hepatitis, from cardiac issues, from issues of the liver, of the kidneys, those suffering from from painful from painful joints so many people so many people have begged you for shifa ya shafi so many of my companions have begged you for your shifa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala complete shifa bless them with complete recovery Bless them all with complete recovery from all illnesses. A recovery that no illness remains. Not even a spot, not even a dot of the illness remains. 
bless them with complete recovery, total recovery, easy recovery, quick recovery, smooth recovery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reward them the best for their tolerance and for their patience and bless them all with the best of iman and the best of belief. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this time of acceptance, in this time where when our when our du'as, our prayers will be heard, inshallah, I beg you for my country. I, I beg you, I beg you to protect my beloved country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I beg you to protect and take care of my beloved country. Allah help Pakistan. Allah protect Pakistan. Allah save and guard Pakistan against all the crises and all the calamities. Allah all the social, all the economic, all forms of calamities. Protect, protect my country, protect its boundaries, protect Protect its wealth, protect its mineral resources, protect the nuclear warfare <laughs> technology, protect our straight secrets, protect my country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless my country and bless all the Muslim countries of the Ummah. Bless all the Muslim countries of the Ummah with honest and God-fearing, God-fearing rulers like Hazrat Abu Bakr. Bless us and all the Muslim states of the Ummah with fear, with just rulers and judges like Hazrat Umar. Bless my state and bless all the Muslim states with brave, courageous, daring, Bless us and bless the Ummah with scholars like Hazrat Abu Huraira and Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas and who and make us all, all women folk of Islam, make us all be mothers like Hazrat Safiya, Isma, Hazrat Khansa, Hazrat Ifra, Raziyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Make us daughters like Fatima, Raziyallahu ta'ala anha. Make us wives. Make us wives like Hazrat Khadija, Hazrat Aisha, Hazrat Ummi Sulaim, Hazrat Ummi Dahta, Raziyallahu ta'ala anhumma. Oh Allah, you are the ruler of rulers. Oh Allah, you are the ruler of rulers. Oh Allah, you are the sovereign. Oh Allah, you are the mighty. Oh Allah, you are the master of masters. Oh, the ruler of rulers. Oh, the sovereign Allah. Help the Ummah. Help the Ummah. Protect the Ummah. Guide the Ummah. Guide the misguided Ummah. Unite the Ummah. Oh Allah, unite the Ummah. Allah, help the Ummah. Protect and defend the Ummah. Guide the Ummah of your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah, unite our Ummah. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we beg you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we beg you with with our hands raised with with all of us sobbing with our hearts splitting with the pain 
We have all beg you with our hearts, splitting with the pain of Umma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help, help my daughters of Kashmir. Allah save their honor. Allah support the Mujahideen, my Mujahid brothers of Afghan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help them, protect them, all working in alliance with the Ikhwanul Muslimun of Egypt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help them. Allah help them. The J.I. leaders of Bangladesh who have been oppressed who are being persecuted badly, help my J.I. leaders. Allah take care. Allah take care of the orphans and the widows of the Syrian Muslims. Allah, oh Allah, oh our merciful Allah, Listen to the prayers of the Palestinian mothers. Listen to the prayers of the Palestinian mothers witnessing the bodies of their martyr sons. Allah help the Mujahideen of Islam. Allah help the scholars of Islam, the preachers of Islam, the teachers of Quran. Allah help those, Allah guide those, Allah reward those, all those who are working for the implementation of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of those, make us one of those, accept us all for the path of Allah. Oh Allah. You are our creator, our sustainer. You are our master. We are your slaves. You are sovereign. We are the subdued. You are eternal. We are the beggars. We are the beggars. Our decisions are at your disposal, Allah, our decisions are at your disposal. O oh, glorified, we find no shelter save yours, no refuge save yours, no reliance save yours, no door save yours, no threshold save yours. Your player is our provision. Your forgiveness is our refuge. Oh, powerful. Oh, the blessed. Oh, the glorified. Oh, the exaltless. Oh, the faultless Allah. Hell. Hell is a wretched abode. Hell is a wretched abode. Rabbana Srif Anna Azaba Jahannam Inna Azaba Kana Gharama Inna Hasad Mustakarum Wa Maqama Its dwellers will neither live nor die. Who enters will be humiliated. Oh, forgive <coughs> Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we fear the fire. We dread the food and the drinks of the hell. We fear the dresses and the beddings of hell. We dread the solitude, the anguish, the regrets of hell. The illnesses, the snakes, the scorpions, the hammers and maces of hell. Save us all from hell. Allah save us all from hell, save our bodies, our skins from the hell fiber, save us, our families, 
our deceased, our descendants and our descendants all from the hell, from the torments of hell. Forgive us. Forgive us all. Forgive our major and minor sins, known and unknown sins, secret and manifest sins, O oh Allah. Forgive us all. Allah, you are all forgiving. You approve and you instruct of forgiveness. You are all merciful. Forgive us all. We beg you. We pray to you. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all our hands raised with all our eyes powering with all our hearts fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray you we beg you forgive all what we wore forgive all what we saw what we heard and was forbidden Forgive and pardon all what we talked if we hurt someone. Forgive our arrogance. Forgive the envy of our hearts. Forgive our evils, our wrongdoings. Forgive when we were lazy. Forgive when we got forgetful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We admit we wronged. We admit we wronged. Allah, we admit. We confess. And we regret. Allah, we all admit we confess. And we regret. And we come to you with repentance. We've come to you with repentance. We seek forgiveness, O oh Allah, the forgiving. Forgive all of us. We fear your torture and torments. We seek your shelter. We seek your shelter against hell. And we also seek your shelter against every action or every saying that leads to hell. Out of your mercy, forgive our sins. Out of your mercy, pardon our faults. Save us. Save us from the humiliation of that day. Allah, save us all from the humiliation of that day. If you don't forgive our sins, well, swell. Oh Allah, if you don't forgive our sins, who else will? If you don't shelter us, who else will? If you don't save us from hell, who else will? And if you don't bless us and reward us with Jannah, who else will? Rabbi ibn li'inda ka baitan fil Jannah. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma as'aluka al-jannatu al-firdaus. Rabbibni li'indaka baytan fil janna. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Rabbi ghfir wa raham wa anta khayru al-rahimin. Allahumma ghfir lana. وارحمنا واحتنا وآفنا وارزقنا اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم ألف بين قلوبهم وأصلح ذات بينهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم لعن الكفرة الذين يسدون عن سبيلك ويقذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين قلمتهم وزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بقسق الذي لا تردوه عن الكوم المجرمين 
فاطر و سماوات و الارض انت ولی فی الدنیا و الاخرہ توفنی مسلم و الحقنی بسوالی توفنی مسلم و الحقنی بسوالی ربنا اننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا اننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكنا عذاب النار وكنا عذاب القبر وكنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا عذاب الميزان وقنا عذاب النار اللهم حاسبنا حساب يسير اللهم اجرنا من النار رب ابني لي عندك بيتا في الجنه ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين امين ثم امين